Now that's a lot of dough. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most expensive Pawn Stars items. They sold for 80,000, I think that's a fair price. For this list, we're taking a look at the most expensive items owned, bought, sold, or valued on the hit history channel show Pawn Stars. Number 10, 1932 Lincoln Roadster, $95,000. This should be interesting. Lincoln made some of the coolest cars ever made in the 1930s. If there's one thing this car isn't short on, it's style. Back in season four, a gentleman by the name of Uncle Phil showed up at the gold and silver pawn shop looking to sell his 1932 Lincoln Roadster. The stunning vehicle has a 150 horsepower V12 engine, making it one of the fastest cars of its time, and an opulence that is totally out of place considering it was manufactured during the Great Depression. It's crazy that Lincoln made this badass ride at the height of the Great Depression. But think about it, since there was fewer buyers for luxury cars back then, automakers had to go all out to compete for their business. Harrison states that a 1932 Lincoln Roadster in mint condition could fetch as high as $170,000 at auction. However, seeing as how this one had a few imperfections, Harrison managed to get the owner to part with it for $95,000, $5,000 less than he'd originally wanted. Not bad for a badass ride like this. Okay, deal. Number nine, 2001 New England Patriots Super Bowl ring, $100,000. It's an actual Super Bowl ring from uh, the 2001 Patriots versus Rams. Unlike many of the other items on this list, we never got to see former New England Patriots cornerback Brock Williams walk into the world famous gold and silver pawn shop. Super Bowl ring in hand. Believe it or not, I have pawned hundreds of Super Bowl rings, but they always pick them up. However, that hasn't stopped Rick Harrison from promoting the impressive item to drum up business for his store. He needed cash, so I think the guy in the night shift actually offered him 10,000, but he only wanted 2,600 because it's a lot less expensive to pick it up that way. The story goes that Williams pawned the ring, losing ownership when he defaulted on the loan, only for Harrison and company to forget about it. That is, until Harrison was going through his pond inventory and rediscovered it. The ring has a mind-boggling 143 diamonds and is made from 14 karat white gold, placing its value at roughly $25,000. However, due to Harrison's affinity for the ring and its sports legend background, it currently has a price tag of $100,000. I put the ridiculous price of $100,000 on it, which is way too much money, but if someone wants to give me that, I'll actually sell it. I think I'd sell it for probably around 60. Number eight, 200 pounds of silver, $111,000. Growing up, my dad always taught me to invest, and so I'm here today to cash in on that investment. Back in season six, a customer walked into the Harrison Boys pawn shop lugging a trolley loaded with what he described as a whole lot of silver. The massive collection of silver had been bought years earlier when its value was much lower. Just about every cell phone, every computer, television, they all started needing silver. They say patience is a virtue, but in this case, patience netted the owner a whopping $111,000. As a longtime collector of the precious raw material, the old man was particularly excited by the haul, leaping out of his chair to inspect it. Despite asking for $115,000, the owner wasn't exactly thrilled at the prospect of having to transport all that silver someplace else, so he happily accepted Rick's offer. Well, I bought it 12 years ago for way less than that. <laughs> 111 sounds good to me. All right, still 111. Number seven, a 2,000 year old Roman coin, $150,000. I have an ancient Roman coin I'd like to sell. It's from 42 BC. We can think of few professions other than historian, museum curator, or celebrity pawn shop owner where assessing centuries old Roman coins is part of your regular routine. That's pretty cool. That says Ides of March. And that whole line became famous because of the Shakespearean play where Julius Caesar goes and sees a soothsayer and he goes, beware the Ides of March. Minted in the years following the death of Julius Caesar, the coin features a portrait of Brutus, the Roman senator who organized the infamous assassination on the Ides of March, making it one of the rarest coins to ever grace the counter of the gold and silver pawn shop. It, it really, really is an amazing coin. I know there's not a lot of these in the world. While the owner asked for $150,000, and Rick's professional coin appraiser valued it between $125,000 and $150,000, the best Rick could do was $110,000. 
In the end, the owner decided to hold on to the unique piece of history. 110 said, yeah, I don't think I can go below 140. If you change your mind or have really bad luck while you're in town, <laughs> come back and see me. I appreciate it. Number six, where the wild things are artwork, $250,000. These are amazing illustrations from Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. This is oh, that totally is cool. amazing. That is cool. For the right item, Rick Harrison and company are more than happy to venture outside the comfort and security of their Las Vegas shop. Case in point, this season 15 expedition, in which Rick visited an art gallery to see some of the original artwork from celebrated author Maurice Sendak's classic 1963 children's book, Where the Wild Things Are. Where the Wild Things Are. It was one of Maurice Sendak's earliest books, written and actually illustrated as well. The illustrations were of the highest quality, and when coupled with their pop culture relevance, made for an insanely expensive piece. Due to their rarity, Maurice Sendak never sold any artwork from the original book. The owner was asking $375,000. What I would value the collection at is about $375,000. Oh. Um. However, thanks to a professional valuation of $310,000, Rick was able to get the lot for $250,000. Not bad for a day's work. I can't believe I'm doing this, but uh, you got a deal. Number five, a contract signed by the Beatles, $500,000. I actually got one of the most important documents in rock and roll history. The contract between Brian Epstein, who was the manager, and the Beatles creating the partnership between the two of them. It's not every day a guy walks into the world famous gold and silver pawn shop with a contract signed by the Beatles. However, that's exactly what happened back in season six when a seller brought in the original contract from 1962 signed between John, Paul, George, and Pete Best and their manager, Brian Epstein. Brian Epstein was a genius. He basically transformed the Beatles from an unknown band playing small clubs into the biggest rock band ever. The contract outlined the percentage Epstein would take from all of the Beatles' future royalties, a not too shabby 25%. The seller was looking to get a million dollars for the uber rare piece of Beatles memorabilia, but upon further inspection, it was revealed to be only worth 500,000. Naturally, this meant Rick offered the guy 350,000 for it. In the end, the seller decided to try and get a higher return for the piece at auction. Um, I'm gonna have to decline on the 350. Good luck with it. Number four, Jimi Hendrix electric guitar, $750,000 to a million dollars. This guitar was actually played by Jimi Hendrix. That's a big wow factor right there. When a seller entered Rick Harrison's shop toting Jimi Hendrix's 1963 Fender Stratocaster electric guitar, the indomitable salesman was floored. If real, Rick proclaimed, If this was actually owned and played by the legend himself, this will be the coolest guitar ever to walk into my shop. Lo and behold, the epic piece of rock and roll history was the real deal, with its auction value estimated at $750,000 to a whopping $1 million. If you watch Pawn Stars, then you know Rick Harrison loves nothing more than to lowball customers, so he offered the seller $500,000 for it. Seeing as how it could potentially be worth double that, the seller decided to walk. I can't do it, man. But I'll call you if I change my mind. Call me, okay? All right, man. Number three, a 45-foot-tall dinosaur robot, $1 million. What the hell is this thing? This is Robosaurus. This 31-ton, 45-foot, car-crunching, fire-breathing monstrosity caught Chumley's eye back in season three. So he roped Corey into checking it out. Did you feel that? <laughs> dubbed Robosaurus, the giant robot dinosaur's owners were asking $1 million for it, stating that you could make $25,000 a day renting it out to various events. Despite the item's wow factor, it is a four and a half story fire-breathing dragon, people. Corey decided to pass without even bothering to negotiate with the seller. Oh well, looks like Chum Lee will have to find another car-destroying robot for the shop. It, it was very cool, guys, but I have to admit, million bucks is a little out of my budget. Number two, O.J. Simpson's getaway car, one million three hundred thousand dollars. The O.J. Bronco. <laughs> wow. It is the O.J. Bronco. Are you kidding me? In 1994, Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ron Goldman were found stabbed to death in Simpson's home, where she lived with her husband, actor, and former NFL running back O.J. Simpson. 
Mr. Simpson was immediately declared a person of interest, but instead of turning himself in, he hopped into a white 1993 Ford Bronco and engaged in the most famous car chase in history. This isn't just any SUV, it's the SUV. It's estimated that 95 million people watched the chase on TV, making the Ford Bronco as infamous as Simpson himself. So when a seller called up Rick Harrison and informed him that he was in possession of the car, Rick had to check it out. Due to its one-of-a-kind nature, the seller was asking $1.3 million for it, a price that proved way too high for Harrison. I'm gonna pass on it? Okay. With something like this, it's so much of a gamble. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. A Suit Worn by George Washington – $3 million Drum roll. Whoa. In season 15, Rick went to see a three-piece suit from the mid-18th century worn by the first president of the United States, George Washington. The incredible piece of American history was in remarkable condition, despite being almost 300 years old. Do we know the date on this thing? I think it's from the 1750s or 60s. Okay. Washington was famously very concerned with how he presented himself to people, so he only wore the finest clothing at all times. You just don't see a piece of Americana like this very often. The silk suit may look a little dumpy now, but back in the 18th century, it was bright pink, making for a truly impressive fashion statement. In the words of the seller, everything has a price, and this item's was a cool $3 million. Uh, I wouldn't sell for less than $3 million. Rick tried to get him lower, but the best the seller would do was $2.5 million. Better luck next time, Rick. Okay, well, I guess the suit's out then. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.